Okay, Prabhuji. So, uh, Hare Krishna, everyone. Danvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> Can we do um, recording also? Yes, Prabhuji, I am recording. So, um, I um, tried to collect some information about Bhishma Panchak from um, um, uh, other devotees' uh, lectures on YouTube and then some... Um, uh, ISKCON, Desire Tree, and other websites from ISKCON. Um, so I do not have too much information about Bhishma Panchak, but I was mainly hoping to talk about Bhishma Pitama. I, and please forgive me, Prabhu Jai, it could not attend your lecture yesterday. So uh, Nirbhay Prabhu filled me in a little bit about how much uh, we covered. So I'll start just with the uh, little bit about Bhishma Panchak. So we know that these are the last five days of Karthik month, which are known as Bhishma Panchak, also known as Vishnu Panchak. And uh, these are considered very auspicious to make spiritual advancement if one practices uh, certain austerities and uh, vratas during this, these five days. And various um, scriptures uh, like uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas, Padma Puran, uh, Skand Puran, many scriptures mention the importance of um, uh, fasting and practicing austerities during these five days uh, and one gets um, um, maximum level of spiritual advancement in this time. So even if one has not been able to uh, fast or observe rest of the Karthik month uh, offer lamp and sing Damodarashtikam for rest of the month, but even if they do some uh, vrat and um, austerities in this five days, they get the same benefit as having observe the fasting for the entire month of Karthik. And if one has been fasting or observing the rest of the Karthik month and they continue with more dedication in these five days, then even better. So, um, so then um, I will just <clears throat> quote um, uh, some verses that have been mentioned by Srila Sutta Goswami uh, in the Padma Puran. Um, and I will not the Sanskrit, I'll just um, uh, tell you the translation of these verses. So he uh, says, in the month of Karthik, which is very dear to Sri Hari, one who bathes early in the morning attains the merit of bathing in all places of pilgrimage. Anybody who offers the Lord a ghee lamp in the month of Karthik, O Brahmana, becomes free from all kinds of sins such as killing a brahmana, and he goes to the abode of Lord Hari. Uh, then Srila Sudh Goswami continues in the next verse, if anyone fasts and observes the Kartik Vrata according to the rules and regulations, the Yamdutas, the messengers of Yamraj, run away from him, just as an elephant runs away by seeing a lion. This dear fast of Lord Vishnu is even better than performing 100 great sacrifices that would take him to heaven because the person who observes the Kartik Vrata goes to the spiritual world. Um, and then there is a third verse which says, although one can easily reach Mathura, Braj Mandal, on this earth, and although Kartik month is easily observable, and although in the month of Kartik, all of the places of pilgrimage, oceans, rivers, and lakes come to the Mathura area. Still, those human beings who are foolish and suffering in the ocean of material existence do not take advantage of it. So these uh, three verses by Sutta Goswami are from Padma Puran. Um, so then um, um, in the... In another, in the Skand Puran, it is mentioned that uh, it, the instructions is given to Vaishnava that, O oh sage, of that foolish person who does not offer a lamp in Lord Keshava's temple during Karthik month is not considered a Vaishnava. So this is uh, mentioned by Lord Brahma to Narad Muni in the Skand Puran that, O oh, son Narad, the month of Karthik is very dear to Lord Keshava. If anyone acts meritoriously in this month just to plead Lord Vishnu, he receives unlimited results. So those were some glories of um, uh, Karthik month mentioned in the Skand Puran. But uh, uh, overall, uh, the whole month of uh, Karthik is very auspicious. In the last five days, 
uh, were the ones that Bhishma Pitama observed uh, strict fasting as recommended to him by Krishna, that if uh, somebody uh, fasts in these five days, then he will uh, receive my eternal devotional service and reach my uh, eternal abode. So Bhishma Pitama uh, practiced, uh, uh, fasted for these five days and practiced austerities during these uh, uh, five last five days, and they are known as the Bhishma Panchak. Um, and then in um, um, uh, Garur Puran, um, it's mentioned that there are different kind of flowers that can be offered to the deities during the Bhishma Panchak days. So on the first day, um, one must offer Padma or lotus flowers to the feet of the Lord. On the second day, one must offer bilva leaves or wood apple uh, to the thighs of the Lord. So we're going from feet, then thighs. On the third day, one must offer gand or scents to the navel of the Lord. On the fourth day, one must offer java flower to the shoulders of the Lord. On the fifth day, one offers malti flower to the head of the Lord. So, um, these, this is mentioned in Garud Puran, various uh, flowers to be offered to the deities. And then it is also mentioned that ideally one should take bath in Ganges or the other holy rivers every day and offer Tarpan three times for Bhishma Dev by saying the mantras. So then there are three mantras mentioned that should be um, uh, offered every day, uh, uh, offer Tarpan three times for Bhishma Dev. Um, it is also recommended that during these uh, five days, uh, we remember Bhishma Pitama and his um, uh, time on um, his time, his stories on earth um, and take inspiration as he was um, uh, one of the 12 Mahajans. Um, this, uh, I wanted to quote this shloka from Bhagavatam. This is 6th canto, 6.3.20 and 21, where all the Mahajans are mentioned. Swambhu Naradashambhu Kumara Kapilo Manu Pralado Janko Bhishmo Balir Vayasakir Vayam Dwadashi Te Vigyanimo Dharmam Bhagavatam Bhata Guyam Vishuddham Durbodham Yam Gyatvam Ritam Ashnate so basically here, um, uh, Srila Sud Goswami is telling the, sorry, not Sud Goswami, this is Yamraj telling the, his um, messengers, his, um, uh, so the Yamraj is instructing his messengers uh, about who are the 12 uh, Mahajans. And he says, Lord Brahma, uh, Narad Muni, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, Lord Kapila, Swambhu Manu, Pralad Maharaj, Janak Maharaj, Grandfather Bhishma Pitama, Bali Maharaj, Sukhdev Goswami, and I myself, so Yam Raj, know the real religious principle. My dear servants, this transcendental religious principle, which is known as Bhagavad Dharma, or surrendering unto the Supreme Lord and love for him, is uncontaminated by the material modes of nature. It is very confidential and difficult for ordinary human beings to understand. But if by chance one fortunately understand it, he is immediately liberated. And thus he returns home back to Godhead. So um, actually I was listening to Amrind Prabhu's lecture and he was mentioning how uh, there are 26 qualities of devotees and the, there is one that is must. And that one quality is that he should surrender completely to Krishna. So the main quality of all these Mahajans is that they had surrendered completely uh, to Krishna, and that is why they, they are so dear to him. Um, and then um, I just wanted to talk about uh, uh, Bhishma Pitama a little bit. Um, I know that uh, we discussed his uh, birth and um, um, earlier um, life. I wanted to mostly talk about the time of war. So we know that Bhishma, we discussed this before, that Bhishma Pitama uh, served Krishna in Viras uh, during the war. And that's why he fought um, in opposing party with uh, Korvas. 
So the material reason that is given by Bhishma Pitama Fout on the opposite side is that he had made this uh, vow to serve the whoever is on the throne of Hastinapur. So that's why he was bound to the throne and he had to serve Dhritarashtra and uh, do his uh, bidding. Uh, that is the material reason given. But the spiritual reason why he was on the opposing team was because he was serving Krishna in this Veera. So, uh, so even when he's fighting with Krishna, it's not in um, animosity or um, his arrows are not really hurting Krishna. They are, whenever he would hit Arjun and those arrows would hit uh, Krishna, they'll just fall like flowers on Krishna. So, uh, so between... Um, a devotee and Bhagwan and God, there is this, um, uh, basically he's delight, he's giving delight to Krishna in this manner by fighting uh, on the opposite side. Um, so as far as the war is concerned, uh, Mahabharat, uh, we know that Bhishma Pitam was the commander in chief of um, the Korva armies uh, and he was the first commander in chief. And the whole time that he was the leading person, he was a chief, the rules of war were followed very dedicatedly. So um, uh, rules like uh, the war will end at sunset. Uh, uh, there were certain number of people that were that will fight against certain number of people one-on-one -on -one versus um, uh, depending on their ranking and all, who will fight with whom and uh, uh, who can kill whom. All those rules were properly followed. And this was because every because Bhishma Pitama was uh, very authoritative, and his uh, he had put his foot down that if uh, I'm to participate in this war, then the rules have to be followed. Uh, the, the soldiers were allowed to mingle after sunset, and there will not be any further killings, any further war after sunset. So, um, uh, and uh, Duryodhan was always very careful to protect Bhishma Pitama at all times because he knew that he Bhishma, Bhishma Pitama is the is their power in their in their army there is an, uh, nobody to match uh, the uh, match the Pandavas but Bhishma Pitama if there is anybody that can uh, kill Pandavas then it's uh, Bhishma Pitama so he was very careful to always form his rankings in such a way that uh, Bhishma Pitama was always very well protected but he would always be nagging um, Bhishma Dev to uh, kill Pandavas. So five or five days of war had gone by and they were fighting and Pandavas were uh, being heavy on the Korva sides and nothing, and they were not getting killed. So Duryodhan was getting very um, anxious and he would, at the end of every day, he would nag uh, Bhishma Pitama and be disrespectful and uh, ask him to, um, to kill Pandavas the next day. So this time on day five, at the end of day five, he was so uh, he was so disrespectful. He was um, insinuating that Bhishma Pitama does not want to kill Pandavas. He's they are they are his favorites, and he will never uh, he does not want uh, Korvas to win the war and all this. So uh, Bhishma Pitama finally decided, okay, I will kill the Pandavas tomorrow. And so he um, uh, took five arrows and uh, uh, chanted some mantras uh, on the arrows so that he empowered those arrows in such a way that they will definitely, each arrow will kill each Pandava the next day. And he said, with these five arrows, I'll kill all the five Pandavas. So Duryodhan was very delighted. He was, um, he was beyond joy that, okay, finally the Pandavas will be killed. But he really wanted to be sure that the arrows will remain safe. So he took the arrows with him and he said, I'll safeguard these arrows for the for tonight. And tomorrow you keep your promise and kill the Pandavas. So he uh, kept the arrows in his um, camp. Uh, now Krishna, um, um, obviously, is, uh, you know, he found out. And um, we know that Krishna can change anybody's plans and he's the game changer uh, at all times. So once uh, Krishna find out, he uh, went to Draupadi. And he told Draupadi, I need you to go to Bhishma Pitama and take his blessings. So she said, yeah, yeah, definitely. Why not? I'm always ready to take his blessings anyway. So he said, but go without any jewelry, any bangles, any anything that might make noise, any tinkling things on you, take those off. So she took all her jewelry, earrings, necklace, whatever, or um, things on her dresses that might uh, 
uh, make any noise. And he said, you have to go to Bhishma Pitama and very quietly, when you see that he is very immersed in thoughts, very, when he's deep in his thoughts, then you uh, interrupt him and ask him for blessings. So she was very surprised at this uh, unique uh, request, but she uh, will do whatever Krishna says. So uh, she went to Bhishma Pitama's um, uh, camp and very quietly stood there. Uh, she uh, and then when she found the right time, she interrupted Bhishma Pitama in his thoughts, and he immediately turned around and he said, "Sabhagyavati bhav." So Sabhagyavati bhav means be very uh, fortunate and. Um, um, uh, when he gave this blessing to Draupadi, uh, Draupadi uh, took uh, his you know paid him respects, and uh, um, uh, she said, "The only way I can be most fortunate uh, or sabhagyavati is if my husbands are safe, if my husbands stay alive and safe in this war. So, um, so you have to tell me how to keep them safe." So Bhishma Pitama said. Um, who put you up to this? He immediately realized that this cannot be uh, just Draupadi's thought mm -hmm. process. So Draupadi told him that Krishna sent me here. So Bhishma Pitama laughed and he immediately realized that, you know, Krishna being the Bhagwan, already knows what is going on. He knows about five arrows. And so there is no point hiding these uh, from him. So he told Draupadi that I have, I have planned, I have promised Duryodhan to kill your husbands tomorrow. So he has the arrows. It's not in my hands anymore. Um, I have decided, I have taken vow to kill them tomorrow. So, uh, but he has the arrows that will kill them. So Draupadi told this to Krishna and now Krishna went to Arjun. And he told Arjun, okay, Arjun, now your turn and go to Duryodhan this time. So, um, and he told, he reminded Duryodhan that, uh, he reminded, uh, sorry, Arjun, that Duryodhan owes him um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, benediction for having uh, saved him from Gandharvas uh, many months back. So, uh, ask him to uh, fulfill that promise. He, he gave you a benediction that he would do, he would fulfill anything that you want uh, one day. So ask him to fulfill that promise today. So Arjun understood and he went to Duryodhan and reminded him of that promise that he made at the time when uh, Pandava saved uh, Duryodhan uh, from Gandharvas. So Duryodhan um, said, okay, I can fulfill my promise. You know, he's a Kshatriya, he, he will keep his word. So um, he's very proud, Kshatriya, at that. So he said, okay, what do you want? Do you want me to give you Indraprast? I can give you Indraprast. If, is that why you are here? Because he thought, okay, I can give them Indraprast now, but I have the five arrows. We can kill them tomorrow and still keep the Indraprast. So he said, okay, you can take the Indraprast if that's what you're here for. Um, so Arjun said, no, I'm not here to take Indraprast. I want to take those five arrows that Bhishma Pitama gave you. So Duryodhan had no choice but to give him back the um, arrows. So in this way, Arjun um, got the arrows and uh, came back to Krishna. And basically Krishna ruined the uh, whole uh, uh, setup that uh, Bhishma Pitama and Duryodhan had come up with. So next morning when Bhishma Pitama asked Duryodhan for the arrows, he said he had to tell him that Arjun took them away. And... Um, uh, Bhishma Pitama laughed because he knew that Krishna had put him, put Arjun and Draupadi up to all this uh, mischief in the night and got, got away with the arrows. So, um, so uh, Bhishma Pitama said, okay, uh, Krishna broke my promise. I'm not able to keep my promise to Dur Duryodhan anymore because of Krishna. So I'm going to break one of his promises. He promised that he will never... Um, lift a weapon uh, in this war. He will not fight in this war at all. He will not lift any weapons. So I will make him lift a weapon. So that day, Bhishma Pitama fought very ferociously. He was everywhere. He, nobody could get away from him. He killed uh, more soldiers than other uh, army combined. And uh, when he was fighting with Arjun, it was such a such a ferocious war that Arjun was uh, losing miserably. 
and uh, krishna uh, got really upset with arjun he was he was watching this fight and why is arjun not able to fight despite all his all the instructions given to him uh, but arjun is still a little bit you know has uh, full of compassion for his uh, grandfather so he um, uh, was trying to fight but bhishma pitama was overpowering him so finally krishna got very upset he got down from the chariot and there was a broken chariot nearby he picked up the wheel of that broken chariot and ran at bhishma pitama um, very angry with his eyes blazing he ran at bhishma pitama and when bhishma pitama saw this saw this vision of krishna uh, running at him he was mesmerized he got down from his chariot he put his weapons down and he folded his hands and just um, just uh, paid his respects to krishna and sat down on the field uh he basically was inviting krishna to come and kill me this is the best death that is possible uh for a devotee so um and krishna on the other hand and he's taking in this vision of krishna running at him with the chariot in his hand and uh, he's he has sweat all over him and his uh, upper garment the uh, uh, shawl kind of garment that krishna had is flying away um from flying away from krishna and uh, he's all dusty he's covered by dust from all the war all the fighting uh and in this way he's running uh, with anger towards bhishma pitama and bhishma pitama was taking in this in this vision uh, uh did not want to even blink uh and wanted to just uh, he was so overwhelmed with this and then arjuna came running after krishna and grabbed his feet he started praying to krishna oh hey krishna do not don't do this don't break your promise don't kill bhishma pitama you promise that you won't fight in the war you won't kill anybody you won't lift a weapon so don't uh, don't do this for on my behalf i will fight properly i will fight with uh, bhishma pitama uh, properly as per your instruction don't do this so then uh, krishna he pacified krishna and uh, krishna put the wheel down and instructed bhishma pitama to um lift his weapons again and uh, start fighting again so in this way um war um, uh, kept going but this was this is a very very beautiful past time where um, uh, krishna basically fulfilled the promise of um, bhishma pitama he broke his own promise to fulfill his devotee's word to keep his devotee's word because bhishma pitama um had uh, promised that i will make krishna left the weapon so uh, he wanted to fulfill that word of his devotee and in this way he accomplished that uh, but till the end of his days bhishma pitama kept remember, remember, remembering this vision of krishna running towards him with anger and how he looked and how he was how the chariot was in his hands and he could not he did not want to think of anything but but just keep uh, stayed absorbed in that particular vision so um the war kept going and bhishma pitama was very uh, powerful over the pandavas army and um, uh, he was overpowering them so and they had no uh, they had no knowledge of how to kill uh, bhishma pitama he cannot uh, uh, you know he uh, has uh, the boon of uh, icha mrityu so he can only uh, decide when he wants to die himself so what can we do so pandava pandavas were very um pandavas had no clue what to do so they obviously asked krishna and krishna said uh, only bhishma pitama can tell you how he can be killed so he instructed yudhishthir maharaj to go to bhishma pitama and ask him this was the end of the ninth day he said go to bhishma pitama and ask him how he how you can overcome him how you, he can be killed so um when bhishma pitama um uh Uh, met with yudhishthir he said um there is only one way i can put my weapons down in the war and that is if i if i am to fight against um a female against a um <clears throat> a princess or a female not uh, not a male soldier so then i will not lift my weapon because being a kshatriya i will not harm i will not uh, fight against a, a female warrior so um Uh, so then uh, yudhishthir maharaj and uh, pandavas um decided and uh, i'm sure everybody has heard the story of shikhandi and i don't know if it was covered yesterday but 
um, uh, basically uh, Shikandi in his previous life was Amba. Amba was the girl uh, that uh, was um, kidnapped, one of the three princesses that had been kidnapped by Bhishma Bhitama to marry with um, uh, Vichitravir and um, I'm forgetting the other other's name, but his, um, basically uh, they were brought to marry them and Amba did not want to marry um, uh, those princess princes and she had his um, she had uh, another prince that he, she was committed to. So when she was when Bishbitama dropped her back to the prince, he would not marry her either. So in this way, Amba um, uh, was sort of abandoned by everybody and was very resentful of Bishbitama and wanted to take revenge. And so that whole life as Amba, she spent um, with uh, in company of uh, uh, sannyasis and performed a lot of austerities. Uh, and finally, when she was born as Shikhandi, she had the memory of um, um, Ambas and wanted to take revenge still. So Bhishmbitama had recognized that Shikhandi is basically Amba uh, from, uh, her, from his previous life. And uh, Pandavas decided to use Shikhandi on Arjun's um, chariot. And Shikhandi will be in front of Arjun so that... Um, uh, Bhishan Pitama will not be able to fight against uh, Shikhandi and Arjun will fight from behind Shikhandi. So that was the plan made. And so on 10th day, um, uh, Shikhandi was on the chariot of Arjun and um, uh, Arjun started uh, fighting from behind. He was uh, um, throwing his arrows from behind Shikhandi at Bhishan Pitama. Um, uh, Shikhandi was obviously also uh, throwing arrows and Bhishma Pitama did not raise his bow at all. Uh, and uh, after numerous and numerous arrows, so many arrows punctured um, Bhishma Pitama that he was, um, he was covered in arrows from, um, his, from the whole torso, the whole body was covered with arrows and he fell down from his chariot. But even then he continued to fight. He picked up his um, his uh, gada to fight, and that was broken by uh, Arjun with his arrows. He picked his um, bhala to fight, and that was also broken by uh, Arjun. So um, finally, um, Bhishma Bhitam was completely overpowered by all the arrows that Arjun shot from behind Chikandi, and he fell to the ground. And uh, Bhishma Bhitam, uh, and Arjun during this whole time was so... Uh, remorseful of what he's doing. He, when he was doing this on instruction of Krishna, so he, uh, and this was vital, Bhishma Pitama's defeat was vital to win the war. And this was Krishna's instruction to win the war. So no matter what, he wanted to carry out the instructions of Krishna. And yet he was so remorseful that he had to fight against Bhishma Pitama like this and to sh shoot arrows at him from behind Chikandi. He was constantly crying as he was shooting the arrows. Uh, and finally, when Bhishma Pitama fell down, everybody came to pay respects to Bhishma Pitama and Arjun was beside himself with grief. Uh, but Bhishma Pitama congratulated him. He said, uh, you think it's, um, you, Shikhandi's arrows did not even touch me. They cannot, they cannot hurt me at all. They were, they were soft. They did not do anything to me. It's, it's your arrows, Arjun, that, uh, uh, that killed me. And on that, I congratulate you. So he congratulated Arjun for accomplishing this, this task. Nobody could defeat Bhishma Pitama. Um, and Arjun's arrows were the one that could do that. So finally he fell down and uh, uh, Bhishma Pitama asked Arjun to, or asked the people, everybody was surrounding him, all the Pandavas, Duryodhan, and all the Kauravas were surrounding him. Krishna was there. So uh, Bhishma Pitama asked for an neck support. And... Um, uh, somebody ran to get some pillows or something for him. So Bhishma Pitama said, no, I need a neck support that's fit for Kshatriyas, for a fallen soldier. And Arjun knows what to do. So Arjun uh, basically shot a few arrows in crisscross uh, under Bhishma Pitama's neck and head and made a support out of the arrows. And uh, in this way, Bhishma Pitama was able to lay his neck, um, neck on the... Uh, arrows and he was finally laid on the bed of arrows. 
Uh, and then he was um, thirsty. So he said, okay, somebody quench my thirst. And Arjun again shot arrows in the earth and a, a fountain of uh, pure water from under the earth came out and uh, um, from Ganges and uh, into Bishmapitama's mouth and quenched his th thirst like that. So, um, so this way, uh, Bishmapitama was uh, overcome and the next commander in chief was um, Dronacharya. So um, uh, I will come towards the end, but I wanted to share, I know that um, we don't have enough time, but in the uh, Bhagavatam, first canto ninth chapter is uh, the, the chapter is titled Passing Away of Bhishma Dev in the Presence of Lord Krishna. So I will skip to the end of war and talk about uh, last few days of uh, Bhishma Dadama's life. So um, once the war was over, um, Yudhishthir Maharaj uh, was to uh, acquire the throne and he, he was back in Hastinapur and he was paying respects to um, uh, Dhritarashtra and uh, Gandhari and everybody. And he was feeling very remorseful. He was very, um, upset, uh, regretful of the, uh, of the war, of how people, how so many people had died, of the whole carnage. And, and he felt really uh, guilty that at the end, the, the whole outcome was that he was supposed to be the king. And for that, to that end, so many people had died. So he was very, very uh, remorseful of this. This is the chapter I was talking about. So, um, Everybody tried to talk to him, reason with him, but Yudhishthir Maharaj was just ready to take sannyas. He said, "This, this is, this is not the way to get get the throne. I am not fit uh, to sit on the throne. I have caused the death of so many, uh, all the sons of Dhritarashtra and so many other soldiers and husbands and sons have died because of me. And this is, uh, I am not fit to rule. So I will take sannyas." Krishna tried to reason with him, all the Pandavas, everybody tried to reason with him, uh, but Yudhishthir Maharaj could not be uh, consoled. So finally, Krishna uh, recommended that we should visit Bhishma Pitama and take his blessings and uh, his instructions uh, and hear his instructions to Yudhishthir Maharaj. Um, and that uh, will be most helpful. So in this way, basically, um, Krishna understands the will of Bhishma Pitama. He knows that he, Bhishma Pitama is waiting, to, waiting for him um, before passing away. And also he wanted to glorify his devotee. He wanted uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj to hear these instructions from Bhishma Pitama. Not, not, I mean, he could have given instructions to Yudhishthir as well. Krishna could have given instructions himself, but he chose uh, Bhishma Pitama to give those instructions basically to glorify his devotee, um, and um, uh, they all went to Bhishma Pitama. Uh, and this this is the chapter which covers uh, how everybody uh, went to Bhishma Pitama, where he was lying on the ground and he uh, looked like a demigod fallen from the sky. And so many great uh, devotees and uh, Brahmins, all the uh, uh, rishis. Um, uh, if you see here, Narad Muni, Dhamya Rishi, Vyasdev, uh, Bhardwaj. Uh, um, Vashishta Muni, Parshuram, uh, Asita, Gautam Rishi, Atri, so many Rishis. And this is a mark of how much respect um, everybody had uh, for Bhishma Pitama. They, everybody knew that Bhishma Pitama is the, uh, he was not only the greatest Kshatriya, the greatest states person at that time, uh, but also uh, he's one of the Mahajans and greatest uh, devotees of Vishnu. So, uh, he, everybody wanted to hear his uh, uh, last words and in presence of Krishna, especially. So all, all these people were assembled around Vishnu Pitama, paying their respects to him. And he, uh, in his own way, paid respects to everybody. So initially he glorified Krishna. He started with prayers to Krishna. And actually there is um, uh, the last verses of this uh, from 32 to 41, these are the prayers of uh, Bhishma Pitama, and this is called Bhishma Stuti. 
So actually this song, I, I don't know if anybody in the conference call can sing these, but this is sung by devotees in a very melodious uh, tune. And these are, these um, uh, verses are the Bhishma Stuti or on how uh, Bhishma Pratama was glorifying Krishna. He was remembering Krishna's uh, form and uh, when he was uh, running at him and then how he looked when he was driving the chariot of Arjuna, how his, uh, uh, how the chariot looked, how there was Arjuna in the back and Krishna um, um, and uh, four white um, horses in the front and how his uh, yellow dress would look like, how there was dust on Krishna's face and how there was uh, beads of uh, sweat on his body. So he was, he was constantly remembering all this and completely meditating on Krishna. Um, after glorifications of, uh, after paying his respects to Krishna, uh, finally, um, uh, Krishna asked Bhishma Pratama to give some instructions to Yudhishthira Maharaj. And so he, uh, and Krishna empowered him to speak because Bhishma Pratama was there without any food and water, with so many arrows in his body in such a painful state. But Krishna uh, took away all his pain, empowered him again so he can speak in presence of all these rishis and Brahmans and uh, Pandavas and gave instructions to Yudhishthira Maharaj on how to, uh, first of all, um, first of all, uh, get him rid of his, of this delusion that Yudhishthira Maharaj was in, and then give him instructions on how to rule uh, Hastinapur properly. So uh, Bhishma Pitama gave many, many instructions, and there are, th that's a long, long um, narration of those instructions, but I'll just mention a few on how a leader should be, how a king should behave. Uh, one of the things Bishwatama said was that a king should always be in control of their senses. So Raja is one who can regulate their senses. This company senses per Rajo. So he should be able to control his mind and senses. A king should be able to manage uh, his disappointments. He should never be easily disappointed because there will be many, uh, many situations in which things will not work out. So he should not be easily uh, disappointed. He should never be morose. He would, should be joyful. And a king should always favor the truth. A uh, king should not be very soft or very harsh. There should be a good balance uh, between both punishments and rewards given out by the, by the king. He should also be very respectful towards less privileged people. So people who are, um, let's say, children or older people or women or uh, poor he sh and people not in very good position or status, he should be always very respectful towards them. And um, do not hire, he said king should not hire people that are very lazy or lusty or envious, arrogant, sinful people, should, they should not hire such kind of people. He should also choose his personal attendants very wisely. Uh, people that can guide him in both spiritual and material matters that are both that are that both type of people should be uh, there in 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 uh, king's uh, court people that can guide him in spiritual as well as uh, material matters and then he should a king should not um, be very lusty towards uh, luxuries or money or women or aristocracy he should maintain respectful distance from these people, from these things uh, do, he should not tax his people very heavily, otherwise people can revolt. Um, a king should always read scriptures regularly. A king should balance, um, sorry, I did that. King should act as a servant, not as a dictator or autocrat. He should act, he should know that the position of king is that of a servant towards his, uh, towards the public, towards his kingdom, not as a dictator. Uh, and he should not take his enemies for granted. Um, but if the enemy is more powerful than him, then he should uh, pay respects and uh, keep friendship with them. Um, and then people asked him um, various questions and he asked, um, he, he answered those questions. So one, somebody asked him, what is the origin of sin? Where does the sin come from? So he said, greed is the origin of sin. So uh, never be greedy towards anything. Uh, what kind of friends should one not have? He said there are three kinds of friends one should not have. Very lusty people, 
sinful people and ungrateful people. Out of these, ungrateful is the most important one to not have ungrateful uh, friends. And then somebody asked him, what is truly non-violence? Non -violence? So he said, being equanimous to all living beings is the true non-violence. Um, he also told, um, told them many, many stories. Um, there are many stories of, uh, that he told them about to, to elaborate on these points on how one should behave and what kind of people to hire, uh, how to, um, um, uh, what kind of um, company to keep, what kind of leadership. So he gave uh, analogies through various stories. He also said, don't give power to those people who, who want power. So don't give power to power hungry people because it goes to their head and then they're not able to, they, they only think of themselves. They become greedy and hungry for more power. Give it to those that actually do not care for power too much. So in this way, he gave many, many instructions to Yudhishthir Maharaj. And um, um, finally, uh, looking at Krishna, he, he uh, became completely absorbed. He, he, com he merged his body, mind, and words with Krishna completely. And uh, in this way, he, uh, uh, with his boon of Ichamrityu, he left his um, body and um, went to the spiritual abode of Krishna. So um, that's all I had. These verses are very nice to read. I went through them very quickly, but um, if we have time during these Bhishma Panchak days, we can read these verses and Bhishma Stuti. Uh, and that's all I had to share. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji, for sharing. Beautiful lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Mataji. For the first time, it was so clear to me, this part of the Bhagata. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Very nice, thank you. Very nice. It was so elaborate, so elaborate. Really, a lot of reading and studying has been done in this. Very nice. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji. I think, uh, in fact, many of the points which you mentioned, I was not aware to. It was really a lot of content. And, you know, I appreciate the kind of, you know, the homework you had done. And then, in fact, you know, Ryan and Deepika, I think they have not, uh, they were not able to join. Uh, I think you're recording it once Prabhuji shares. Definitely we can rehear. Thank you so much again.